Welcome to Charlotte's Wandering Web with your adventurous guide to the good times, Charlotte Tweed. Each week, Charlotte takes you on the journey of a lifetime to a delightful Caribbean locale where the sun never sets on your good life at a great price. And now with her muy amigo, Carib Carter, here's your host, Charlotte Tweed. Hello, hello, hello. This is Carib Carter and welcome to Charlotte's Wandering Web with Charlotte Tweed. And she has definitely been wandering this past week. So let's see where she's been. Charlotte, how are you? I'm good, Carter. How are you? I am good. I am good. And it's great to see you. It's great to see you. So you have been out and about. This yes, past week. we we went to Guadalajara for a day trip. Guadalajara. Let me. Fortunately, I have a map, folks. Very good. You see the little red? Can you see the little red dot? <laughs> There's Guadalajara right there, right? Yes, there. that is right. Yeah. There we go. All right. All right. Visuals are always great, Carter. <laughs> Visuals are. Always, <laughs> no, no matter how primitive. There we go. That's so right. Tell us about Guadalajara. Well, you know, it was interesting compared to Mexico City because Guadalajara is the second biggest city in Mexico. Um, traffic is terrible. Like, really? You know, like it would be expected. Yeah, it's it's pretty busy. We had a local taking us around. So she didn't take us to just the touristy spots. We went to places where tourists usually don't go. But we also went to, you know, the main square and saw the cathedrals and that type of thing. So. Very, very nice. Yeah. And you have some footage for us, right, of uh, of your trip around Guadalajara. So we did do. you, how long were you there? Just in and out just one the, day? Yeah, just the day. It's only a half hour drive. Oh, that's right. It is. Yeah. It's right. It's right next yeah. to the lake there. Yeah. 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 So we did yeah. that. And then the interesting thing, too, there's a little town inside Guadalajara called Lacapaca. Lacapaca. <laughs> Yes, and it's spelled, I should see, make sure I spell this right, T-L-A-Q-U-E-Q-U-E, lock up, that's, that's not right. <laughs> I took a picture of this, <laughs> but it's, but fun it's to pronounced, say anyway, La Capaca. It's pronounced La Capaca, right. and it is actually designated one of those magical Mexico towns, like what Ajijique is, like what Maldonado was, but it is right inside Guadalajara. But beautiful little area walking. The streets are all walking streets. There isn't traffic on some of them, which makes it really nice to go to the shops. There's restaurants. There was one restaurant there. It was absolutely massive, but it was a combination of four restaurants all together. And then right in the center, they'll have entertainment when they have festivals. And I can only imagine how loud it gets there when they have festivals. Very, very nice. Yeah. So the restaurants are kind of in a circle around the center area. Yep. And, and, and they have entertainment while you were there? No, no. We were there just before lunch. So it, it wasn't really open yet. There weren't many yeah. people. There. So, yeah, she just walked us through just so we could see what it was like. Yeah. Did you eat lunch there? We didn't eat lunch there. We ate lunch somewhere in Guadalajara. She said, I'll take you to this market because this is not, tourists would not go there. And she's right. We There's no way we would have eaten there. For one, we wouldn't have had a clue what to order or how to order. Right. And yeah, it's um, it's almost like, was almost like a big cafeteria. It was inside and there were different food tables set up with people cooking and families. It's usually always families. And then around where they were cooking were like metal, a metal bar, like not a wooden bar, like what you would drink at. But you'd sit down, pick whatever you wanted. The food was all lined up sort of like a buffet. And you'd go, okay, right. I want the fish or I want the chicken. And then they would bring it to you. But there was there, we were the only gringos there. You were the <laughs> only gringos there. We were the only gringos there. How was and the food? It was good. I, I'm not sure if my husband really liked what he had. He didn't realize what he ordered was soup. And it was hot out. And uh, he really isn't a huge soup fan. But he said the meat was very good. It was a beef type of beef broth, and it came with a whole zucchini in it. I want to say a whole carrot, and there was some other kind of squash. Uh, and then you can put in things like fresh onion or salsas, peppers to kind of to, to spice it up however you want to. Yeah. And most everybody else there was 
Mexicano. Yes. Yeah. There was How no was it, was, was it a friendly atmosphere? Yeah, it was friendly. Like I, I didn't find it hostile or anything. Nobody really seemed to pay any different attention to us. But uh, I'm, I'm glad Emmy was there to help us order. Um, I had a tuna pastry is what I had. So it was stu like stuffed full of tuna, more tuna than vegetables. Usually it's the other way around. They kind of short you on the meat and you get more vegetables. Right. That side salad. Something I was interested. I, I would have had this, but because it was hot, I get so heated up. But it was this uh, shrimp soup and there was whole crabs in this big bowl of soup. So you can see, you know, the one little claw hanging out the bowl. <laughs> And there was yeah a bunch of a bunch of crab in the soup. <laughs> they were whole cooked. Crab. They were yes, whole, so whole crab in their shell. Pretty, pretty big bowl of soup then. It was like it was a almost like yeah. a cauldron size type of of bowl. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. What, what else is in Guadalajara? Did they did they have a a, a uh, they must have a huge Catholic cathedral? Yes, they do. So we went inside that. That's, of course, you know, on the square. And there were a lot of churches, lots of cathedrals. Like every neighborhood has a church. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And, of I course, like you know, people selling their stuff on the side. There's somebody selling bread. So she took us to her favorite vendor that sells boillos. B-O-L-L-I-L-O -L 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 is how it's spelled. Uh, but it's pronounced, their double L's are pronounced like Y's. So we bought some of those with some fresh cheese because I've been looking for good cheese, but the cheese looks so different too. It's what, what do I get? So they had herbed cheese and they have chipotle cheese and you can get it cured and dried and the cured and dried cheese, you actually grill it, which I thought was interesting. So I got the fresh cheese, which is filled with all fresh herbs and put that on a little bouillou, which is like a little miniature baguette, you know, toast that with a little garlic olive oil and put that cheese on. And it is fabulous. It was good. It was good. Yeah. So that's our, that's our, our weeknight snack until we run out of cheese. <laughs> so how did you know this, the, the guide, is this somebody that you, you met or somebody that hires out as a guide? No, she's a real estate agent who took us on the tour. Oh, nice. And she's from, she grew up in Guadalajara, and she just loves showing off her city. So she said, I will take you, pick a day, let's go. I'll take you to Guadalajara and just show you around, because she just Fantastic. loves showing off her city. So, Fantastic. And yeah. I get she must be totally bilingual. She is, yes. Her English, it's funny when they, you know, Spanish speak so fast. There's a, yeah. When they speak their language, and uh, they speak English just as fast as they speak Spanish. So sometimes it's like, what did she just say? <laughs> but yeah, her English is, is very good. Yeah. The, it, it's very funny that the, I think the Mexicans speak Spanish much more quickly than the Central Americans because up at our the vacation home, my wife and has, my wife and I have in West Virginia, the guy who works on our air conditioning, Jimmy Salinas, is from Mexico. Oh. And you will die laughing when my wife, who's from Honduras, imitates Jimmy Salinas. It's like, <laughs> she just, it's Jimmy Salinas. He said, hey, Cody, you know what I mean? Said, you know what I mean? We will fix you after You know what I mean now? You know. Just, to hear a Latina imitating a Latino is very funny, but, but the Mexicans speak more quickly. I think so. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Even yeah. from when we were in Nicaragua. It's it's yeah. different. It's it's not not quite the same Spanish. Yeah, not quite the same yeah. Spanish. <laughs> it's very funny. It's very funny. Nobody can accuse her racist because she's one of them. Exactly. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She, yeah. yeah. So, so when you, what else what else happened other than so you, Guadalajara, which is very beautiful, right? And how, yeah, how many was, people have a, a million, two million? Oh, it's more than that. I. I knew it, but I'm missing the number right now. But it, it's the second largest city in Mexico. So it's... How large is Mexico City? Seven million? No, it's like Mexico City. I might get this, but it's like 32 million or something. It's huge. Really? It's the second biggest city in the world. I didn't... Well, there you go. Yeah. So yeah. it's like... Uh, and don't quote me out. I think it might even be 35 million. I could... But 
I said it on a video a while ago. I had that number in my mind a while ago. <laughs> so Mexico City is like five times as big as New York City. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. 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 Yeah. And so you think maybe uh, Guadalajara, if it's second largest, it might have half. I want to say over 20. And I hope I'm right on those numbers. I hope I'm right on those numbers. But um, Wow. Yeah. Did you see any neighborhoods where people are living? Uh, uh, we didn't drive through. It was mostly commercial areas where she took us through. Right. Uh, we walked through some other commercial areas too. Same thing. It wouldn't be really where the tourists would go, but the street, they were busy. The streets were super busy. And nice. down by where the cathedral is, she said on Sundays from the morning until I believe about two in the afternoon, they actually block it off. So there's no traffic. And she said the whole way down all the streets, I can't remember how many blocks it is, but it was a lot of blocks. It's all market. Really? Yeah, all market. They close it all down. It's all foot traffic. Foot, foot traffic, and she said you can buy absolutely anything that you would need at this market. So I think that would be super cool to see that market. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you felt you felt safe despite oh, yeah. the side. Yeah, yeah. It felt to me kind of like 1970s. 1980s yeah. Canada is, is kind nice. of what it felt like for me, you know, very, and even very in, nice. Yeah. In comparison, like Mexico city is very modern and very old, which to me from what, just what the area we saw, I mean, obviously there's way more to see than what we saw today. Uh, Guadalajara seemed more middle ground, a little okay. more, you know, middle, cra uh, middle class, more, um, like I said, the more the seventies, eighties type of feel. You know, it's a, one of the things that surprised me, you know, my, I think Rachel, my wife, is from the San Pedro Sola area. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the 70s and 80s. San Pedro Sola looks and feels like the Baltimore I grew up in back in the 60s. I mean, that would come as a shock to people. But I swear, walking down the street, I could have been walking back in time to Baltimore of the 60s. And mm -hmm. the Baltimore of the 60s, by the way, was very different than the current Baltimore. Yeah. Very. <laughs> yes, would, the would America of the, the 60s streets. is very different. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which reminds me, I see that your your home country uh, has just declared yesterday the Trudeau government declared that no one in Canada any longer has any right to private property. Did you know that? No, I did not hear that. Yes, they just made that wonderful announcement yesterday. So thank God you now have your <laughs> residency. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, that he picked it up this week. It didn't even take the full two weeks. Yeah. That it, is absolutely yeah. wonderful. Got it here. There, there it is. is. <laughs> there it is. That is great. And that's two wow. years, right? Four. Four. Four years. We don't have to renew it. It's good for four years. The expiry date on here says uh, May 25th. Oh, that's a little, oh, my eyes are getting, I'm getting old, Carter. 2026. May 26, 2026. So when we, when she handed us the cards, she said, come back a month before they expire and you can apply for your permanente. Fantastic. Fantastic. And you'll be in Mexico. So even though you're Canadian, you'll still be able to have a right to own private property. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I want to get my family out of there. So <laughs> you, got, you, you have got to get your family out of there. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's funny that we earlier today we had a, a podcast with Mike Cobb. You mm -hmm. know, Mike is head of ECI. So it, what an incredible person, right? Mm -hmm. So he has on, offshore club essentially is, is part of his empire, if you will, as his escape artist. And uh, <laughs> he is in Granada, um, Granada, um, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And so he took a few minutes to show us this, took his camera there and showed us how incredibly gorgeous it was. I mean, breathtakingly beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, now, you have you been there? Yeah, we went to Granada. I would love to spend more time in Granada. It's the same thing, you know, so much revolves around where the cathedrals are, you know, the squares, the restaurants, the shops. Yes. Um, 
I would love to just go and stay in that area and spend like a couple days just walking the streets in that area. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I knew when he, I knew that he, because he and I had talked, I think yesterday, he said, Carter, don't forget I'm going to be in Granada when we do the podcast tomorrow. I said, okay, good. So I knew, knowing Mike, that he was going to want to show us how gorgeous it was where he was, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, Mike, uh, just for comparison purposes, I took a picture out my back window of where I am in York, Pennsylvania. Okay? Oh, There's the gorgeous. garage across the alley from me, and I live in one of the nicer sections of York. So. You know, if I walk, we took a new path. <laughs> we walked a new path to uh, the the Carretera because right. we, see, we walk by this path. It's it, it is nicknamed the Goat Path, and there are there's goats on it, there's chickens on it, there's sheep on it, but you can't see where it ends. And I thought, I and it, it it's pretty rough to start. It's not if you have mobility issues, you won't. You should probably wear running shoes. And we've never taken it before because we don't know where we're going to end up. But when we were with uh, one of the locals driving by, he said, oh, yeah, just take turn here and go up. That street goes right by where you guys are staying right now. So he said, OK, we'll walk down. And Carter, what you showed is something that you see down one of those streets that is pretty much abandoned. Really? Yeah. Like. And, and you say that's your backyard? <laughs> yes, that's that's it's not my backyard. It's the backyard <laughs> across the alley from me, and it's the garage. The house it's attached to is equally as bad. Wow! And it's typical. It is yeah. typical in what used to be one of the finest cities in America. So you know, you said about wanting to get your family out. Uh, I want to get everybody out. <laughs> and you know, if in Canada or the United States, you wouldn't want to walk down a street that had places that look like that. Right. No. You don't know who is in it. We felt felt completely safe walking down that street. There was an old abandoned church and a graveyard down that street too, which was really cool. It it was really neat. And a farmer's field with his horses and donkeys. And I said there was chickens with roosters and the farmer saw us and he's like, Bien dias. You know, and <laughs> we felt part so now that's our route all the time. We <laughs> we take the, the goat path to the Caratera. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, very nice. So mm -hmm. what are your what are your plans for the weekend? You have any big plans for this weekend coming up? This week, not yet. But, you know, I was going to mention to you, and I know some of the listeners had sent in places where they would like me to go. Now that we have this, yeah. you know, we're, um, <laughs> we're going to be anchored, but also a little more free to go places. And I know there was... I remember three places that were sent in that someone was hoping that we'd go to. So once we get settled at the end of June in our place, our new place that we're going to be renting, we should be able to do a little more traveling around Mexico and see some other locations. So if someone has some place they'd like me to scope out, you know, feel free. Fantastic. Don't forget our friend Sarah wants you to go to Isla de Mujer or some such thing. Mujer, right. I believe. Mujer. Mujer. It's a uh, <laughs> woman's island is how it is in English. But there we yes. go. Yes. And the other two towns were, I believe they were fairly close by there, but they were on the mainland and I I couldn't pronounce them. But I do remember and I do have them. So hopefully it is an area I'd like to go see too, because I'd love to go to Tulum. I haven't been to Tulum yet. So I'd like to see that. All right. Well, and we can't wait to go with you. Yeah. It's fantastic. It is absolutely, this is just excellent because you give people a feel for Mm -hmm. real life in the real world in a wonderful place. Yeah. I mean, Mexico yeah. is a wonderful place. I was going to hold up my map again, but it disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. But anyway, I still have this one though, this picture here. That's one of my, I love it. I'm so glad you posted that on Facebook. That's yeah. just a great, fantastic. Congratulations. I'm Thank glad you. you're there. I'm glad you're sharing your life experiences with mm. us, Charlotte. This is just, it's wonderful. Well, you're welcome. And I should mention, because I've had a lot of inquiries come in, too, from our last week, our podcast, when I was talking about the amnesty visa. So I have written a book, a booklet on it, a guide on that and the temporary and the permanente and what it's like being in Mexico. So I've just finished that up. I'm waiting for the cover that will be coming out on the EA store. I'm hoping before the end of this week. Really? And yeah. so next week, you'll tell people how they can get it. 
I will. Fantastic. All right. Put me on the list. Okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. Once again, thank Great. you for letting us share your life with us. And You're we'll welcome. talk to you next week. There you go, folks. Guadalajara. Um, the, the Really, the good life at a great price in Mexico. We're Charlotte. Don't forget to go to escapeartist.com, where she is the honcho. You, you see how great she is? Well, her publication and her website are equally as enticing and intriguing and delightful. So go there. And uh, as I tell you every week, let's do this thing. <laughs>